in many other emerging South African markets. So don't think that Nigeria is unique uh, with these challenges. And the landscape view is buttressed by certain financial figures released by MTN, Vodacom, and Orange, who are the leading juggernauts in South Sahara, Africa, in terms of the acceleration and transformation of their current voice centric business models to one that typifies an ex uh, and is the existence of one of the emerging or emerging fang competitors, that's the Facebook, Amazon's outlets, Netflix, and Google. Just in order to retain the customer relationship that they used to build up the empires of the old world order. So the voice centric really is the old world, uh, old world order. Yes, connectivity is still a viable proposition in the context of South Africa, uh, sorry, South Africa. However, with the recognition around the globe that an all IP network can now be easily dimensioned to offer converged multimedia services on the back of fiber to X with the formation of either three or four G access networks, it was inevitable that the decline in upper rates in line with OTT alternatives begged the question whether rolling out infrastructure into rural areas was such a wise and smart move after all, even with government subsidies. With a revenue base predicated on certainty of demand from their captured client base, the notion that there were options to threaten their output was a distant thought. With the recent announcement of Google's free Wi-Fi services in certain African countries, the downward trend is only inevitable. That's a reality. We can pretend that the elephant's not in the room. That's our reality to the rest. The infrastructure gap in South Africa, South Sahara Africa is massive. Uh, recent information from African Finance Corporation, that's the AOC, estimates $3 trillion over the 30 year period, and many governments are struggling with budget deficits against budget sizes, totally dwarfed by the average annual revenue line of any one of the banks. Just imagine that. Yet the reality is that Africa and Sub Saharan Africa in particular offers much opportunity for future growth in the mobile broadband space. The challenge, as always, is what comes first? Is it either effective government policies or the ability to manage technological innovations in the absence of an environment that is characterized by much uncertainty? In Nigeria, for example, all the long run of long run, long term indices point to a large population, young demographics, and vast untapped opportunities across all sectors of the economy. The most promising, I must argue, for those below the age of 20 years old is ICT and its ability to drive change and possibility to improve quality of life. However, the ICT sector is fragmented and the telecom train is a state of flux in the absence of an updated regulatory regime that, in that includes the fundamental application of regulatory tools and directives that promote local content and prepare a foreseeable landscape for the data centric digital digitalization that the new program requires. Continually focusing on infrastructural rules that has a waste only technology ambit to it would not suffice and misses the underpinning adaptations that technology has brought as a disruptive enabler for artificial intelligence, machine learning, and robotics to exist. And that will be common with the commercialization of 5G networks when we do get it in just under, in our estimates, seven to eight years from now, that 2025, to 2026 period. In industry, relatively uh, recognized the sheer complexity that this brings to our current way of operating. And yet, to absorb the nature of this technological advancement in addressing our multilingual society that exhibits a technology deficit from one spectrum, that's the apps, most of us in this room are apps, to the other end, and most of them are in this room, have not, when our basic education and territory uh, universities are still read, uh, reading out computer graduates taught in COBOL or Fortran only. How we, get, how, do we, how, do, how we got ourselves to this point is now irrelevant. How we get ourselves out of this quagmire is more important. And may I further argue, can only be achieved through an ICT ecosystem that truly collaborates and imbibes the spirit of true trust and partnerships. Right from academia, government, to the big juggernauts fighting to preserve their patch. Without, without collaboration and partnership being fostered, we run the risk of defining uh, and creating at best islands of progressive digital uh, communities and landscapes that are not interconnected under winner takes all attitude with negative social economic flaws. The scenario stares us in the face and without a rallying call for us to 
take a step back to reshape and remold our current relations with industry face the risk of increasing the level of poverty and the African problem at large. Thanks for listening. That's our contribution on this matter. Thank you.